Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today Google released Android 16 Beta 3 and I have it here on my Pixel 9 Pro XL and I will do a side-by-side -side comparison with Beta 2 to show you everything new. So without further ado, let's jump in. Before starting, just a quick reminder about the wallpapers by in-depth tech reviews app, which is currently on version 3.0 that has a lot of visual improvements better search and more editing tools. So don't forget to download the app using the Google Play Store download link in the description below. And now let's get back to Android 16 Beta 3. Starting with the build number here on the 9 Pro XL, it's PP22.250221.010. And you'll notice here that the grayed out information in the quick settings is now fixed. And now let's take a look at the new features. The first change is the new boot animation. Once you unlock your phone after a fresh restart, you will see these material U shapes animating before jumping to the home screen. And now let's start with the side-by-side -side comparison. On the left, I have Android 16 Beta 2.1 on the Pixel 8 Pro, and here I have the 9 Pro XL running Beta 3. And the first change I noticed is related to the charging. When I plug a fast charger to Beta 2.1, it says charging rapidly. But when I plug it to beta 3, it has a different verbiage and now it says fast charging. Moving to the home screen and specifically the recent apps screen, now when you tap on the app icon at the top, you will see a new close option in the list. Moving to the widgets, when you add the conversation widget to your home screen, you will see a new edit page. Now the items have these containers around them, which gives it a more modern look. And unfortunately, we lost one of the features, which is called the live updates. When you start the navigation in Google Maps on both and then remove the picture in picture window, only on Android 16 beta 2.1, I have the live updates bill at the top left corner, which is no longer available in beta 3. Other than this, all other changes are located under settings. So let's go through them one by one. Starting with the sound and vibration, you will notice here that the sliders are now shorter and when you mute any of these sliders, they will turn into dots and the sliders themselves will disappear. And this is how they look side by side. So let me try to increase the volume one more time. This is how it looks now. And when I mute any of these switches, the whole slider will disappear as shown now on the screen. But the most exciting change here is under battery and we finally got a new menu item for the battery health that will show you if your battery health is normal or not in addition to the battery capacity and as you see here this option is missing from beta 2.1. On top of this you will see a new section for the battery health articles it includes things like troubleshooting your battery and how to get the most out of it and the charging optimization menu is no longer showing on the front page but it's now nested under the same battery health menu, but both offer the exact same functionality. Next, we have a new change under about phone. And here you will see a new menu item called battery information that doesn't exist in beta 2.1. When you go inside, it will show you the cycle count, the date of first use and the manufacturer date. We have one more change under the location menu and then location services and you'll notice here that the timeline option has been added that didn't exist before and when you tap on it it will take you to this menu here you can change your timeline settings so you can turn it on or off you can view your timeline like this and then we have the export timeline data and finally delete timeline data or backup your data to your Google account. And when you go to the display and touch menu, you will notice here that the extra dim toggle under adaptive brightness is now gone, even though I used to have it on beta 2, but I don't see it on beta 2.1 as well. So it seems like Google updated one of the system apps and this option is no longer shown. And when you turn on dark theme on both, you will notice that the search bar at the top now looks different. Instead of having a fill color inside, now it has an outline around the container. Moving to Android 16 Easter Egg, when you tap on the Android version on both and then tap and hold, you'll see some new changes related to the Easter Egg. The first one is the new auto pilot mode that appears at the bottom right corner. When you turn on the switch, it will actually show you a live notification at the top. Even though Google removed the live notification pill as I showed you in the previous example, but now we have it as a notification showing in the notification shade and this is how it looks 
with, a, with, an icon, with an app icon appearing at the top left corner in the status bar. So it seems like Google is still working on the live updates feature, but I couldn't find anything on the lock screen. So as you see here, it just appears as a normal notification that you can expand after unlocking your phone. So let's wait and see what's gonna happen. Now let's go through the fixes I spotted while filming this video beside the ones Google already mentioned in the release notes. And the first one, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, is the grayed out clock, build number, and task manager. Now everything appears clearly in your quick settings. The second fix is related to the double press to open Google Wallet. And now it doesn't lock the phone like in beta 2 and it works well every single time the third fix is under settings and then storage and now the google files banner is back again with a brand new design that looks like a pill instead of using the rounded rectangle like before and when it comes to the bug fixes mentioned in the release notes we got three the first one is fixing various issues that were causing excessive battery drain in some cases fixed issues that sometimes caused devices to reboot unexpectedly and fixed an issue that caused the at a glance widget to display out of date information on the always on display in addition to fixed various other issues that impacted system stability performance and the bluetooth pairing but let me also tell you that this build comes with brand new bugs that i've never seen before and they are worth mentioning the first one is under the wallpaper and the style app when you go to the lock screen and then try to adjust the clock color as you see the slider is working but i don't see the clock itself to see what i'm doing I also came across a couple of temporary bugs that are no longer happening so I'm not going to be able to show you what they do on camera but I'm going to mention them anyways just in case you came across them. The first one is related to the fingerprint unlock. When I tried to add a new one on the 9 Pro XL this graphic that guides you while adding the fingerprint was showing around the center of the screen so it didn't exactly represent where the actual sensor is located and for you to set a new fingerprint you have to tap somewhere on the screen without knowing exactly where is the sensor the second bug was also under settings some sub menus appear in dark theme even though the phone is in light theme and one of these pages was the system uh, update page but as you see it's no longer happening in contrast when i try to edit my clock widget i still see the page in dark theme same as beta 2 so this one is still not fixed and the same applies to the quick settings editing page when i try to edit it on both scroll all the way down you will see this weird look at the bottom and finally the game dashboard settings page is still misaligned so that's it when it comes to the new features now let's talk about the performance and the stability in my opinion the scrolling and the animations are not as good as marsh update i was enjoying the animations on the stable version of android 15 but unfortunately now i'm running 16 beta 3 and it doesn't feel as refined so you need to keep that in mind but thankfully i didn't came across any showstopper or any major bug that blocked me from using the device and if you are curious about the geekbench scores after installing Marsh Update the stable version I got 4600 and 1961 for the single core but now I'm getting 47, 37 for the multi-score and 1950 for the single core so they are about the same in this matter. It's also worth noting that the device runs warmer than Marsh Update when I do the exact same things and it's too early to assess the battery live because half of this usage is already on the stable version so i will give it a couple of days and keep you updated in my future videos so that's pretty much it for today these are all the new changes in android 16 beta 3 in case if i missed anything please reach me out on social media or drop me a comment and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more but for now thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video